The military in Burkina Faso says it seized power and overthrown President Rokabore. This follows a mutiny by soldiers who claim that his government has failed to support them during the years of conflict with armed terrorist groups. In fact, some parts of the landlocked country have been uh, overrun by Islamic groups who've been um, inflicting heavy losses on the military. Uh, now, senior research fellow at Africa Asia Dialogues, Milton Ngozi, joins us now to help us unpack the roots of this conflict. Milton, of course, with us via our video link. And it's great to see you, sir. Thanks very much indeed for making time for us here on Newsroom Africa. I mean, you know, yesterday's major developments, that big announcement by the military on state media, actually followed days of mutinies being held in several barracks, given that... What should we make of the fact that we still don't know where Kabore is? Yes, that's the nature of uh, coups, particularly in West Africa. The communication and information systems uh, were reported to be down, and that is why, um, and also the army is in control. There were three armored vehicles outside the state broadcaster um, until very late last night. Probably they're still there this morning. So they are trying to clamp down on information of his whereabouts. But some sources have said that he's probably in the barracks known as Sangole La Mizana in the capital, Ouagadougou, although that has not been confirmed by any official source. Yeah. The irony, of course, is that Kabore himself got into power through military takeover. And despite what the soldiers are saying about this being about his lack of response to the insurgency in that country, I mean, is this a case of a man falling on his own sword? Well, it's much more complex than that. It may well be the case, but um, the problem in uh, Burkina Faso uh, goes back to when uh, they became independent in 1960 from uh, France because Burkina Faso was a French colony. At that time, in the 60s, the country was known as Upper Volta, uh, named after its uh, main river source, uh, the Volta River. And um, since then, the country has been beset by military coups of one type or another. You would recall that one of the most popular ones was in the 80s, in 1982, by a young army officer called Thomas Sankara, who has influence here in South Africa, as you know, from yeah. one of our parties here. And uh, Thomas Sankara ruled there from 1982 to 1987. And then after that, uh, President Kampore uh, took over for 27 years. He was ousted in another coup in 2014. So you can tell that this is not just about what happened this weekend. It's probably now has become cancerous endemic within the one of the most poorest countries in West Africa. Even by West African standards, Burkina Faso is still one of the poorest countries in that region. You speak about it being cancerous, and one can't help but look at what's happening in Burkina Faso um, outside of what's taken place in neighboring countries, Mali and Guinea. Those nations, too, in recent history, have also been besieged by coups. You are so correct because, in fact, the key word here is Mali. Mali has a border uh, to the west of Burkina Faso of just over 1,300 kilometers. And Mali has had this problem with ISIS, the jihadists, uh, within its borders. And that has spilled over to Burkina Faso and because those borders are, are porous. And uh, that's what has really uh, created problems for uh, President Kubara because the army, as they say in that video, um, they claim that he has not given them enough resources to fight the jihadists within uh, uh, Burkina Faso. But also, they are blaming him from, uh, for failing to unite the nation. That's the quote they used in their video. Yeah. What should we make of how ordinary people in Burkina Faso have responded? I mean, as you're speaking, we're playing visuals of crowds largely cheering on the developments that have taken place. And, you know, I, I can't help but imagine that surely they are also acknowledging that this is somewhat history repeating itself. Yes, indeed. Some of these coups are popular in West Africa. Um, uh, they, they, they tend to uh, bring out uh, some of the uh, problems that the community have been dealing with. Uh, they feel satisfied that those who are lacking in implementation have now been ousted. So we know that on Sunday, 
the uh, crowds came out in support of the coup, not against the coup. Right. So we are uh, still waiting to hear what they're going to say and do. We know that some of them went to the party headquarters and they set it alight. Um, that's how uh, celebratory was the mood from the crowds. But you can never judge by those on the streets. Uh, what about those at home who are not out on the streets? They probably uh, are condemning the coup just as the 15-member uh, state ECOWAS uh, regional bloc uh, did, as well as the African Union, by the way. They did condemn the coup, and the United Nations Secretary General uh, uh, Guterres said that this coup uh, should be ended, and Mr. Kabore's uh, uh, um, safety should be uh, uh, of paramount importance to those who are holding him. Yeah. So the statement that was read by uh, the military was actually signed off, we're told, according to this report by the BBC, by a guy called Paul Henry Dambid, uh, Damiba, I beg your pardon. Uh, is it too soon to speak about who's likely to succeed Kampore? Well, um, he, he says he's in charge, and th this is part of a group known as uh, MPSR uh, for the restoration uh, and for the integrity of Burkina Faso. It's a previously unknown group of security forces and, and, and others. Uh, they, they say that they are now in charge. They've dissolved uh, the National Assembly. They've suspended the Constitution. They say they will return into constitutional order in good time, to quote their phrase. Uh, we don't know who, in the end, will be uh, uh, leading it, uh, except that we know that the, the Lieutenant Colonel uh, Paul Henry is actually a, a very experienced uh, senior military officer. It doesn't seem like there's anybody else who would be uh, running the show in Burkina Faso. He seems to be the man uh, at the front of this, although the statement was read by a much junior uh, army officer. Right. And, you know, you've already mentioned how, you know, some institutions in the international community have responded. The UN, the AU, ECOWAS, all coming out to condemn what's taken place. Interestingly, ECOWAS itself has actually imposed sanctions on Mali and Guinea because of a coup. Uh, by all intents and purposes, we expect the same to happen for Burkina Faso. But the question becomes, does that work? Well, um, it will work. But it's going to be, it's going to hurt the people that ECOWAS is trying to protect mm. or the AU are trying to protect because it's the uh, 21 and a half million population in Burkina Faso, 40% of which are living below the poverty line. So um, if you impose sanctions to such a poor country, you are really clamping down on the ordinary people in that country. Uh, and it's not entirely certain whether that would work, but it's important just to register the discontent and the disapproval of uh, undemocratic means uh, uh, change of power. You've got to, as a regional bloc, promote democracy, peace, and stability in your region for it to thrive. And uh, for ECOWAS, it's important to say we do not support this, even though some of the people in Burkina Faso themselves seem to be supporting the coup. Fascinating to get your take on this. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Milton Ngozi is a senior research fellow at Africa Asia Dialogues. Once again, thanks very much indeed for your time.